this is Doug Green, and I'm the publisher of Telecom Reseller, and today I'm with Divya Vakankar of VIX. Divya, thank you for joining me today. Hi, Zach. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm very excited that you were able to join us today because I think we're about to have an update on a long-term conversation, a very important topic, digital transformation. I'll bet a lot of listeners feel that they're somewhere along the, the train of having done this or completed it or they're about to enter it. But I have a feeling that it can be done incorrectly or poorly, that the journey and experience can be can go very wrong. And we're going to learn how maybe to prevent those bad experiences. We're going to be diving into that topic in just a moment. But Divya, first of all, what is BIX? BIX is a global communications provider that enables organizations to connect their customers and devices instantly and safely. It's a two-sided communications platform company, creating a virtuous cycle of digital economy for our stakeholders, uh, customers, and partners uh, like telecom operators. So let's talk about digital transformation. You know, Divya, I think I heard the words digital and transformation together for the first time maybe 10 years, maybe more than 10 years ago. And yet, it seems like some companies still struggle with it, and we hear stories of it coming off very poorly. Am I right about that? It doesn't usually, doesn't often work out just the way people thought? Fully agree, Doug. Digital transformation, as the name uh, says, it enables businesses to invent new business models, create new service offerings, and the expectation is to generate new revenue streams and opportunities. While many times it does not deliver as expected, the customer experience still is poor, uh, the operational efficiencies are not achieved, and there is no connection between the work done within the company and the opportunity that the company has to support its end customers. So there, now organizations are looking into their digital transformation journey and trying to see how they can improve the experience, how they can keep innovating to make sure that they have a long-term growth and profitability. And it not only encompasses new business models, but it also includes modernization of the technology and operational excellence. So digital transformation is encompassing a bigger scope now compared to what it used to be 10 years ago. So how has that changed in 10 years? Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so uh, I'll start with the, the customer journey for any organization, right? So there are different steps in the customer journey, right? Starting from awareness. So every company would like to make sure that their customers have a great experience when they are going to ha do a business with a specific company. So in order to take care of that, they have to make sure that during the awareness phase, they are working towards the customer to make sure that the customer has all the information that they are looking for, for the, from the business. And in order to take care of that, they should interact with the customer, they should have campaigns for the customers, so that when the customer is, become, is onboarded, they have a better and safe communication with the customer. So very important is the onboarding process, where authentication services play a major role. And then going forward, there should be transactional and engagement that should go along with the customer to make sure that you are supporting the customer in their journey. And later on towards the advocacy phase, you want to make sure that the customer has an experience to remember when they are engaging with the customer care and the support teams. So during this whole customer journey, organizations can really help to achieve end-to-end -end operational excellence and provide best digital customer engagement experience to their end customers. 
You know, and before we dive a little bit deeper into the process, you know, I imagine there are some people who really haven't fully embraced, especially at the enterprise level, a digital transformation. At this date, is there still a reason to do it? In other words, if you really haven't started, is there is there a reason to, to actually get underway? Indeed. Uh... I, I recently I was going through a study from Moses Create and they talked about 82% of large enterprises are going through their digital transformation journey at the moment, right? So it's it's not late, right? Many of us as organizations are having three types of wind flowing through, right? There are headwinds where we talk about the ongoing pandemic, uh, geopolitical situation, uh, and then there are some tailwinds, which is about the stimulus being given by the by the government, the revival of the consumer demand, and then there are also acceleration happening in the innovation uh, right now in the industry. Well, there are some crosswinds also at the same time, which is the changing technology norms, which helps uh, uh, with regard to digital transformation. And there are some social and environmental sustainability factors. So when, when we look at a global picture, right, from uh, as, with a helicopter view, you can see that today is the time for enterprises to invest in digital transformation so that they can, they can benefit from the tailwinds and can create new opportunities for themselves and their customers to make sure that they stay ahead in the game and they have the right business model to support their end customer. And it sounds like um, companies that are not embracing this or offering their customers will be kind of left behind. Indeed, the companies who will, who are not supporting or who are keeping digital transformation as a low priority in their roadmap, in their digital strategy, would lag behind the competition because the competition is going forward with new technology advancements, right? For example, cloud computing, uh, using the benefits of the cloud security, for example, making sure that they are uh, using services being delivered uh, in a multi-tenant way to make sure that they are keeping their OPEX and CAPEX under control, right? So that helps organizations to invest further in their uh, service offerings. Hence, it is a must-have for organizations now to embrace uh, digital transformation. Well, then let's bring BIX into the picture. How can BIX help? As we talked about BIX earlier, BIX is a global communications provider, right? So we have a global infrastructure which is resilient, which is geo-redundant, and which provides a greater quality of service. We enable our customers, organizations, with communication and mobility services. We help our customers to engage with their end users to make sure they are supporting their end users in their day-to-day -day operations. And that goes along from onboarding the customer for utilization of a digital service offered by the organizations to delivering these services or these offering or products in the market to the end users. So just, give, just giving you an example, when you are buying a, a product on, on a retail or an e-commerce, right, you are in the process of your digital engagement with the platform. First of all, you have to authenticate yourself on the platform. So for that, you are using a two-factor authentication service uh, that is being that is using your mobile phone as the second factor authentication and there you need these global communication services the delivery of sms to you via the platform itself 
once you have a secure onboarding by taking care of the two-factor authentication, then you are in, your, in the process of buying a good on the, on the retail website. Once you have done the transaction successfully, uh, then you get a notification that your good will be delivered in, in a specific duration. That communication, that transactional communication is also via a channel, be it uh, messaging or voice, right? And if, for example, I, you are not able to receive that good because you are not available during a specific, when the delivery is pending, then your interaction with the customer care of that retail company is also giving you a, you know, a piece of customer engagement. How are you engaging with that company? And the delivery notifications that you receive are also going through the, the, the backbone of, of the communications provided to, and, and making sure that you receive the message in the due course of time without latency, making sure that uh, there is a conversion rate to it, associated to it. So these all factors play a role in the, in the digital experience that is being offered by the retail or, or, or any other organization to the end customers. And I take it that uh, a bad digital transformation, you mentioned onboarding, for example. I bet it's really hard to recover from that. Indeed. If the onboarding phase is not correctly built, then the customer is not going to have a good experience at the platform and may not return to the platform in the future. That's interesting. And you kind of lose that customer forever. Yes, you lose the customer forever. Have you, uh, you know, uh, without putting you on the spot, have you had customers who came to you after such experiences and then you were able to sort of right the ship, so to speak? Indeed, there have been a couple of instances where we have seen customers really looking forward to uh, quality of service as the main criteria for selecting a vendor for communication services. Why? Because quality of service includes how the message or a voice communication is being delivered to the end customer. If there is a delay, it is also a bad customer experience and you lose your customer forever. If the message is not delivered at all, if that also hampers your relationship with the end customer. So it's it's critical to make sure the service provider delivering these communications to the end customer is providing quality of service, making sure that there is least latency, high delivery rate, and provide you the mechanism and the analytics to see how your business is engaging with the end customer with a reporting system, for example. And, you know, it sounds to me, Divya, that these, this level of detail can only be achieved with, with, with a partner of some kind. In other words, you know, in our industry, there's often a temptation. We have a lot of very capable people. They try to do things on their own. Are you making an argument here, bring on a partner? Customer engagement can only be delivered by ecosystem of players, right? Every vertical can focus on their core offerings and can leave the customer engagement enablement for the partners. There are partners in this ecosystem, like BICS and other companies, who have the capability to deliver the services to the end users and work and create a virtuous cycle actually between the organizations, the digital platforms, and the end user and their devices. And they can they can do it at a very efficient speed and at a very uh, you know keeping it simple end-to-end. -end. 
So, Divya, I want to thank you for joining me today. This has been a very interesting conversation about digital transformation. And I understand also that you have some important news coming up the next quarter. Uh, yes, Doug. Uh, we are launching a Microsoft Operator Connect voice enablement. So, BIX is uh, going to launch it in the next uh, quarter. Also, BIX will be launching a communications platform as a service, which will help our customers in their customer engagement and digital transformation journey. So uh, keep uh, keep tuning in. Well, it's always a pleasure to podcast you guys and to share with the CCA and TR communities the latest news on BIX. I feel I've learned a lot about digital transformation, and you've, I think you've given us uh, some uh, things to think about as a lot of people continue on that journey. I'm looking forward to seeing you in upcoming events. But for now, Divya, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Doug, for inviting me. Bye.